The word classic is applied to many franchises in gaming, but to me, nothing epitomizes that word more so than Capcom's flagship Mega Man franchise. Well, he's hit some rough spots here and there in his career, the series as a whole has endured a solid 30-year run of being one of the most iconic in all of gaming, and it's easy to understand why. Everything from the character designs, legendary music, and simple to understand yet challenging as all hell gameplay all helped push the franchise to massive heights, immortalizing it as one of the most beloved franchises of all time. So, why is it that being a very popular series and the favorite of many gamers, myself included, is it that the first game is kind of not great? Yeah, the, the first Mega Man, a lot of people forget, is kind of forgotten about for a good reason, especially in lieu of its more popular and vastly more fun successors. Everyone is too busy gushing about Mega Man 2, with its great level design and gameplay, that they often forget that the game that started a series of over 50 games is not as good as those games that came after it. I'll explain. Set in the abstract year of 20XX, Dr. Light is a roboticist that created six robots for use in various industries like construction, mining, logging, etc. These six robots, known as the Robot Master Line, are Cutman, Bombman, Fireman, Iceman, Gutsman, and Elecman. There are also two other robots that assist him in his lab, named Rock and Roll. Yeah, that's, that's the joke. Their, their names are Rock and Roll. Dr. Light's former partner, Dr. Albert Wiley, however, was jealous of Light and reprogrammed the six robots to do his evil bidding and... You guessed it help him take over the world. Of course! Rock, being a robot with a strong sense of justice, had Dr. Light turn him into a machine better suited for battle, becoming who we know as Mega Man. It's a simple plot that does its job, it doesn't really have to do a whole lot, it's just an excuse to have a game. It doesn't require any twists or turns, and lends itself to being repeated without becoming tiresome, as it's usually stuck to the manuals of the games and not in the games themselves. When you begin, you can start the game with whichever level you want, a staple that would continue until this very day. Part of the strategy here is that each boss is weak to the weapon from another boss, so you, the player, are tasked with figuring out the order of which to complete the stages. Certain levels have alternate paths and routes you can only take if you've acquired a certain boss's weapon. This actually adds a fair amount of replayability to the game and keeps it feeling fresh and new. For the purpose of this review, I started with Bomb Man stage. Normally, I do start with Cut Man on my playthroughs because he too is pretty easy to beat, but I decided I wanted to shake things up and go with what is recommended to be the first robot master that you fight. The first thing you will notice when you play this game is that it's hard. Really hard, actually. I wouldn't call myself amazing at video games, but I am better than most people. Even as far as Mega Man games go, which typically they're hard, but this game puts them mostly to shame. This, along with Ninja Gaiden and Ghouls and Goblins, fuck, Ghosts and Goblins, they really help cement that term. Nintendo hard. After beating Bomb Man, it's on to Guts Man's stage. Which has some cool gimmicks, such as the moving lifts that will suddenly drop you. These things are the most annoying things in the game. They probably killed me more times than anything else. Almost as bad are these guys that throw pickaxes. They take way too many shots, and if you back up even a little bit, they'll respawn with full health. And their shields deflect your shots. 
Hey, come on, I just got rid of this guy. At least the levels in this are short and they can be beaten pretty quickly. If you adapt to the shit they throw at you. But with all the stage gimmicks, respawning enemies, etc., you'll be lucky to make it to the boss of the stage with half of your health intact. It's here that we notice one of my biggest issues, the inconsistency in difficulty. Next is Cutman stage, which is probably the easiest for me because it was the one I always started on as a kid. I cleared it here without dying or even using the rewind. The level is pretty standard Mega Man stuff, you just go left to right shooting whatever gets in your way, and is probably the most like any stage from any other Mega Man game. No particularly weird gimmicks or particularly annoying enemies. Although, I do have to tell you, when you start the level, do not go right at all, immediately go left to that ladder, otherwise an enemy will spawn and you will be stuck down there. You're welcome. When you get to Cutman, switch to the super arm you got from Trashing Gutsman and use the blocks by the door to take Cutman down with two hits. Easy as shit. I know I've been ragging on this game for the most part, but you know... Mechanically, it's on par with most of the games in the series. Running and jumping feel good. Really good, actually, and shooting your gun has a satisfying pew 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 sound to it. When you take away the frustrating level design and piss poor balancing, the game has a very solid foundation that you can see flourish in the much better games that came out later in the series' lifespan. From there, I suggest doing a Lechman stage. Not only is a Lechman weak to the rolling cutter you got from Cutman, but it will really help you when you're stuck on the ladders and have enemies coming from above and below you. You'll also need Gutsman's weapon in this level, so make sure you've beaten him. There are two blocks that you have to throw to get an item that is absolutely required to beat the game. Otherwise, you will have to redo a Lechman's level again to get it. On my very first playthrough, I missed this item. There's no indicator at all at any point in the game that you will need it, so consider this your warning. A Lechman is a hassle and a half when you get to him. I had to use the rewind feature here a lot, um, particularly because I, I just didn't want to have to replay through a huge chunk of the level. Now, once you only have Iceman and Fireman left, the only logical choice is Iceman. His level is a pretty standard ice level at first, with slippery floors, penguin enemies, and the arctic aesthetic. But it very quickly turns into a game of sheer frustration once the disappearing blocks are introduced. Elect Man's level really was the level that introduced them, but they were manageable there. Ice Man's brings the bullshit dial up to 12 with these fucking things. These are easily the most annoying things in the game, as they require you to really sit there and analyze them. Which I wouldn't normally have a problem with, except for the incredibly annoying sound they make. And the very moment you think you've got the pattern down, the game flips you a big middle finger and throws another block in your way. You bet your ass I used the rewind here. Now, I, I want to take a minute to just talk about the art style of Mega Man. The games, to me, always had this art style that mixes the elements of Japanese manga and American superhero comics. Many of the characters blur the line between looking kinda cute and quirky, and downright badass and cool. And this is re very heavily reflected in the game's animations. Mega Man himself is just this cute little blue dude but he oozes with personality despite how limited the animation is. His run cycle just has this feeling of sheer determination. 
you can really tell that he's a man that's ready to rock. Man. After frying Iceman with the Elect Beam, we're on to the final Robot Master, Fireman. This is probably the second easiest of all the levels. The only major challenge is the falling fireballs. The level itself is actually pretty straightforward. Fireman himself is pretty straightforward too if you've beaten Iceman. After all six Robot Masters have been reduced to scrap, we move on to the main man himself, Dr. Wily. This level is also where you need the magnetic beam from Elecman stage. It allows you to create platforms, and without it, the stage would be entirely unbeatable. So, really do conserve its ammo. Because if you run out at this specific moment, you will have to go all the way down this ladder and get ammo for it. And you want to know the worst part? Your ammo does not replenish when you die. That's pretty standard Mega Man stuff, though. So, I already knew that going into this, but still, that is kind of BS. Imagine getting this game as a kid and not knowing that you would need that easily missable item. This is mentioned in the manual, but really, when you bought a game secondhand as a kid, how many times did it come with the manual? Some sort of clue in-game would have been preferred. The boss of this stage is the Yellow Devil, who is probably the most iconic boss in the series, as it's been reused quite a few times. This battle will take every ounce of wits and strength that you have. Gamers will sing songs about it for centuries to come. It will be why I die, controller in hand, as I enter the halls of video game Valhalla! Or you could actually just shoot the elect beam once and smash that pause button like it owes you money. The last level is a combination of gimmicks from previous levels, with it ending in a gauntlet against the previously defeated Bombman, Gutsman, Iceman, and Fireman. No Cutman and Electman, probably because there wasn't much hope of beating all six of them in a row, so you fight those two in the second Wily stage instead of all at once like in later games. Each boss takes quite a bit more punishment than they did before, ramping up the difficulty a fair bit. I actually feel like they should have been this hard to begin with. The difficulty of the bosses really should match that of the levels. Even with the weaknesses, they take quite a bit of punishment here. After crushing them again, you come face to face with Dr. Albert Wiley in his first form. I don't think I ever really got used to the patterns in this phase, and I, I actually only won because I used the fire weapon. The second phase was actually a lot easier. He shoots these balls that have a pretty erratic pattern and home in on you. They can be pretty tricky to dodge, but if you stay close to him, they don't usually hit you. For this form, I suggest switching to the rolling cutter, due to its range and arc. Sure, you can only fire one at a time, but if you stick with it and keep avoiding his shots, soon you'll have the bad doctor groveling at your feet in no time. Now, Capcom was notorious for terrible, terrible endings when it came to their console games back in this day. How exactly does Mega Man 1's ending fare? Mega Man has ended the evil domination of Dr. Wily and restored the world to peace. However, the never-ending battle continues until all destructive forces are defeated. Fight, Mega Man, for everlasting peace.
well, it's it's good. Not not amazing. <laughs> Come on, guys, we're, we're we're not getting uncharted levels of storytelling here. But compared to stuff like Ghosts and Goblins, this was a huge step up. This was actually Capcom trying, is evident in the gameplay itself. For a console title of the time, it is as one would expect. A lot of people forget that most NES games didn't age well. At all. When you take that into consideration, the game hasn't aged poorly, but it hasn't aged perfectly. It's kind of like Christopher Lloyd. It, it hasn't aged that well, but it hasn't aged poorly. It's been roughly 68 for 30 years. Overall, Mega Man 1 is a mess. Far more frustrating than fun, and playing through it again for this review was a uh, chore. I don't want to be rough on the first game in a series because it is when the series is finding its footing, it's finding its identity. But the first Mega Man game is not good. It's not terrible, but it's not good. As stated previously, the game is damn near perfect on a mechanical level. You really can see what they were going for here. When the game wasn't pissing me off, it was quite fun. I actually did enjoy a fair amount of the game. But to call it... good? is a stretch. The game is kind of like a cursed Frogurt. The platforming is solid, the platforming is solid and weighty, but the level design sucks balls. Shooting enemies is really fun, but the enemies constantly respawn. For every delicious sounding ingredient, we find out there's a curse behind it. Yeah, the game is flawed, but it's pretty much what you would expect replaying a game from 1987 in the year 2020. But despite its flaws, despite its issues, it eventually led to bigger, better things. Some of the greatest games ever made, actually. It led to classics like Mega Man 2 and Mega Man X, the Mega Man Zero series, the ZX series. It led to Mega Man X7. Oh shit. <laughs>